In this video, we're going to talk about ionic equations and also the associated net ionic equation. And in the process, you'll also get a clear understanding of the meaning of precipitation, acid base, and redox reactions. Now, we talk about ionic equations in chapter four of the chemistry textbook. In your chemistry textbook, this might be a different chapter number, but the chapter is titled Reactions in Aqueous Solutions. The whole point of this chapter is to study three of the most common types of reactions that occur in aqueous solution. Precipitation, acid base, and redox, or oxidation reduction reactions. All three of these types of reactions, if we're talking about the circumstance where they take place in aqueous solution. So like an oxidation reduction reaction doesn't necessarily have to take place in aqueous solution. But in this chapter, we're talking about reactions in aqueous solutions. For all three of these cases, we're going to write out an ionic equation in a net ionic equation. All three of these types of reactions, the starting point is, so before any reaction takes place, the instant before any reaction takes place, you've got a bunch of different ions dissolved in water. And then reactions may or may not take place depending on how those ions interact with each other. But initially, that, 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 that instant moment before anything happens, it's so like the reactance portion of the, of the chemical reaction equation is just a bunch of random ions dissolved in water for all three of these. And so if you watched the previous couple of videos where we talk about what, what are aqueous solutions, what are electrolytes, it should make sense why we start this chapter. The first thing we do is study electrolytes because electrolytes dissolve in water and create ions. And so for each of these three types of reactions that we're studying in this chapter, if we don't have solutes that are dissolving into ions in water, then these reactions aren't taking place. Now, am I saying that there's no redox reaction that can take place in water without dissolved ions? I'm not getting into that level of detail. Uh, and, and the similar idea, is there no way a precipitation reaction? So, so you have dissolved solutes and then a solid forms that you can't have a precipitation reaction without ions in solution. I'm not a chemist. I'm sure there's got to be something like, like a sugar type molecule that can interact with another molecule and form a precipitate and there's no ions in the solution. Okay, but what I'm saying is in this chapter, we're studying these three major types of reactions that occur in water. And all of the situations that we're studying in, involve ions in the solution to start. So involve these electrolytes that first dissolve, these different types of electrolytes that dissolve into the solution. And so you have these different ions that can interact with each other and things happen. So what you can conclude from that is these are major reactions, primary reactions that occur dissolved in water, these three types. And the majority of these are going to involve ions in the solution. Okay, let's first take a look at precipitation reactions. In a precipitation reaction, what happens is you start off like initially, you have all of these different ions that become mixed in solution. These different types of ions are all intermixed and dissolved. But then when they interact with each other, there are certain combinations of ions that when, when, when they bond, they form an insoluble product that precipitates out. It's, it becomes undissolved, an insoluble solid. The precip it, it, what, what, what comes out is called the precipitate, and it's an insoluble solid. That's a precipitation reaction. And I'm reading straight from the textbook here. It says that precipitation reactions usually involve ionic compounds. So all the precipitation reactions that we study in this chapter are going to be involving ionic compounds, right? So like acids and bases, that's not ionic compounds, right? An acid or a base. A redox reaction is not necessarily ionic compounds. So but precipitation reactions usually involve with ionic compounds. One way you can write a chemical equation for a precipitation reaction is with a molecular equation. And you can also do a molecular equation for an acid-base reaction or a redox reaction. But we're just, we're, we're taking a look at precipitation reaction at the moment. Okay, 
Now, this is a little confusing here, so, so really pay attention. The, a molecular equation, the way you write this, you're not considering the fact that the ionic compounds are disassociated into ions in solution, right? Because if you remember, any ionic compound is a strong electrolyte. So here, this lead nitrate aqueous, that's an ionic compound. An ionic compound aqueous, this is going to be disassociated into ions, Pb2 plus NO3 minus. But you're not considering that. You're just looking, you're just thinking about the molecules. And, and the way they describe it in the textbook is like, if you think about it from a, from the, from a chemist standpoint, doing this reaction in, in the lab, he might take, you know, take a vat of some solid or some powder or, what, or whatever, take some lead nitrate, take some potassium iodide, Okay, so like you, you talk about it like it's like it's the like it's the compound, right, or the molecule, however you want to look at it, and then we're going to put that together. Now, what's confusing is they put aqueous. You still put aqueous. That's what's kind of confusing because if the if the chemist has these compounds in his hand, you could look at it that way. They're not aqueous yet, but he's about to put them in the water and mix them together. Okay, so he's got this compound, this compound. He they put he puts those together in the water, and what results once, once all these ions are in the solution, they interact, and what, what results is lead iodide non-aqueous solid and potassium nitrate aqueous. So in the water, this is disassociated into K plus ions and NO3 minus ions. Same thing here. This is disassociated into ions. This is disassociated into ions. But, you don't, but for the molecular equation, you don't write it that way. You, you, you want to take a look at the molecules. And it's just confusing because you still do put aqueous on the molecules, but you don't put aqueous here because this is not aqueous. This actually, even in the water, this is solid. Okay, so I hope that helps you to understand the molecular equation. It's confusing because you still, you still put aqueous here. You're just trying to take a look at the molecules, right? Before you put this in the water, this is lead nitrate. Before you put it in the water. And so you write it as lead nitrate, but you still put aqueous. All right, so you might be a little confused because I said that all ionic compounds are strong electrolytes. But look, this is an ionic compound. Lead iodide, that's an ionic compound for sure. It's a strong electrolyte. It's, it's not dissolved. It's solid. We'll talk about that in a second. So this is the molecular equation. What about the ionic equation? We have the ionic equation and the net ionic equation. Let's first talk about the, the ionic equation. The ionic equation is a little more intuitive than, than this, I think. The ionic equation, you're putting the complete physical reality of, of the solution, of the water solution, before and after reactions take place. So let's take a look. Here's the ionic equation for this reaction. Right when you mix everything into the water, you mix the... Lead nitrate, I guess that would be solid, and the potassium iodide, I guess that's solid too. I, I'm, not, I'm not sure, but either solid or, or whatever. Liquid, or like maybe you have a solution of lead iodide and you pour that solution in. Or it could be solid as well. But you, you mix these into the solution together. The instant you mix them in, like the, that, that the instantaneously right after you mix them in and they're mixed in well, what do you have in the water? You've got Pb2 plus ions, dissolved so hydrated aqueous and go watch the previous video a couple of videos where we talk about what aqueous means we talk about electrolytes because that you, you need to see that video before to understand what we're talking about here so you've got these lead ions dissolved or hydrated in water you've got nitrate ions dissolved potassium ions and iodide ions okay and you see how they do this here you, you've got one mole of this lead two moles of this NO3, and then two moles of potassium and two moles of iodide dissolved. That's all floating around in solution the, the, the instant you mix everything. Okay, now everything gets, has a chance to interact. Once everything has a chance to interact, what's the result? This is the result. You get this, precipi this precipitated lead iodide. So all of a sudden some solid comes out of the solution, and it's, it's lead iodide. So this solid comes out, and the remaining solution, you have potassium ions floating around and nitrate ions floating around. That's the, the full physical reality, like fully, okay? 
Now, the net ionic equation is, okay, if you look on both sides of this equation here, nitrate occurs on both sides and this potassium occurs on both sides. So you can, you can cancel those, you can cross those out like that. And, and what, you, what you're left with is the net ionic equation. Lead ions in solution plus iodide ions dissolved in water result in lead iodide solid. So what's the difference between these two? What the, what, what the net ionic equation is telling you is it's just it's strictly showing you the chemistry that's happening, at, at least well, the, 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 the actual chemical reactions that are taking place. Right, because here we dissolve we dissolve the two the two ionic compounds. The nitrate ions go in, the potassium ions go in. They interacting, but they don't do anything. They just stay dissolved from from the beginning to the end. They just stay dissolved. That's why they're called spectator ions. They don't they don't do any kind of chemical reaction. The only thing that's really happening whenever you mix those two ionic compounds, the only chemical reaction is the lead ions and the iodide ions interact to form a solid that's what's happening okay so that's what the molecular equation the ionic equation and the net ionic equation are and we're going to do all we can do all three of these for acid base and redox reactions we're going to we're going to go through each of these types for the for for acid base and redox reactions as well okay now back to the point of lead iodide that's a strong electrolyte right it's an ionic compound this is a great point for understanding the difference between solubility and strong or weak electrolyte. All right, I'm looking at the chemistry textbook right now. It talks about the idea of solubility from two different perspectives. The second perspective is the one that applies here, but let me give you the first perspective. The, the official definition it gives for solubility is solubility is the maximum amount of solute that will dissolve in a given quantity of solvent at a specific temperature. Okay, so the idea is if you have the same solvent, like water or, or any, any solvent, at the same temperature, and you've got two different solutes, you put them both in, they both are dissolving, but then one, as you keep putting more and more, one's going to saturate sooner than the other. The one that saturates sooner is less soluble. Okay? That doesn't apply so much here. It's the second perspective that applies here. It says chemists refer to substances as soluble, slightly soluble, or insoluble in a qualitative sense. A substance is said to be soluble if a fair amount of it visibly dissolves when added to water or to the solvent. So this is just qualitative. What they're saying is if you put like a solid into water, and it just starts dissolving. Like you see some of those tablets dissolve. Then it, they, look, it's visibly dissolving. It's visibly soluble. They call that soluble. If you put something into water and you can see a little bit of it dissolve and then it saturates quickly, then it's slightly soluble. If you put something in and it, there's no, there's nothing visibly really happens or extremely slight, and, and then, then it's insoluble. However, the book notes that even insoluble compounds dissolve to a certain extent. And, that, and that's the important point here. What it's saying is that, so all ionic compounds are strong electrolytes. Okay, right? Here's the, the solutes in aqueous solution, strong electrolyte, ionic compounds. Lead iodide is an ionic compound. But look, it's not soluble. We have, we have iodide, but the insoluble exceptions are lead iodide. Okay, so what does that mean? If you put lead iodide in water, it, nothing is, it's insoluble. Nothing is going to seem visibly happen. But it is dissolving at least to, to a small extent, even if, even if it's a very small extent. It, it dissolves a little bit, and then it saturates quickly, and, the, and then just stays solid. Okay, so how is it a strong electrolyte then? Because when it does dissolve... It's, it, it dissolves fully and completely into the ions. Like, it's not reversible. It's, it's, it's complete, right? It's not a weak electrolyte. It's a strong electrolyte. All ionic compounds are strong electrolytes, 
Okay, so like a weak electrolyte, it doesn't dissolve completely. It's that reversible reaction. Lead iodide is not reversible. It dissolves into the lead and iodide ions in com completely, but it's not. It's it, it's pretty much insoluble by that qualitative definition of solubility, because it doesn't it doesn't dissolve. It saturates extremely quickly, but it's still an electrolyte. You can put some lead iodide in water. Put as much as you can get in the water. There's going to be some ions in there. If you put a big enough battery, it'll it'll conduct electricity. But like sugar, it doesn't matter what you how much sugar you put, there's no ions in solution. Okay? So that should give you a, a much better intuitive sense of solubility versus being an electrolyte. And for precipitation reactions, what we do is you put the ionic equation, well, at least the, the starting ionic equation, you, you write the left side of the, of the ionic equation like this, and then you compare, you say, okay, what if lead 2 plus interacts with, you know, this, this anion or this anion? Is there any insolubility combination? You come to this chart. If something's insoluble, then you know, okay, on the right side of the equation, I'm going to put that as solid. That's going to precipitate out. All right. Now, the idea of solubility and insolubility in the context of these rea these three reactions is uh, you're only looking at that for precipitation reactions. We don't consider solubility for at least in this chapter for an acid base or redox reaction. Now, you might be saying, well, wait, isn't this oxidation reduction? No, it's not. So you start with this ionic compound and this ionic compound. So you've got in the ionic compound, you have lead ions, PB2+. That's how, that's how the lead exists in the ionic compound, in the, in the solid. You have lead 2 plus ions bonded with NO3 minus ions. You dissolve it in water, nothing changes. You, there's, no, there's no electron transfer that's happened. You still have lead 2 plus and NO3 minus. And then similar thing, and similarly with potassium and iodide. At the end of the reaction... Okay, you get this solid, right? What is this? This is an anionic compound of Pb2 plus and I minus. You still just have Pb2 plus and I minus. There's no electron transfer that's happened. All right, so let's move on to acid-base reactions. Here is a, a strong acid, hydrochloric acid, dissolving. It, it dissolves in, in water. It's a strong electrolyte. So we're not going to be talking about solubility anymore with, with, when, when we talk about these acid base and redox reactions. The, if, if, a, if an acid is a strong acid, that means it's a strong electrolyte. If a base is a strong base, that means it's a strong electrolyte. If it's a weak base, it's a weak electrolyte. If it's a weak acid, it's a weak electrolyte. Okay? And so th this isn't a full chemical reaction. This is just showing how HCl dissociates. Okay, so I'm, I'll show you an example in a second of like a molecular equation for an acid base reaction and then the corresponding ionic and net ionic. But if you, if you want to write an ionic equation for an acid or base reaction, let, let's say we're dealing with an acid. So you're going to dissociate. If you, if you have a strong acid, you're on the left side, you're going to dissociate the acid into ions, right? Well, you could do it like this, like for, for the, we're talking about strong acids at the moment. For, for weak acids or weak bases, there's another way we have to look at that. But for strong acids, right, so we were dealing with all strong electrolytes here because we had ionic compounds. Here we can potentially have weak electrolytes. And, and, but right now we're still talking about strong electrolytes, strong acids. If you want to write the ionic equation in, with, with, with dissolved hydrochloric acid, you could write it like this. So H plus aqueous plus Cl minus aqueous, but there's also this idea where you, you represent the H plus, the proton, as H3O plus. You'll, you'll see this sometimes, right? And so to do this, to have H3O plus aqueous plus Cl minus aqueous, to make this balance, you, you put the water here. You put HCl aqueous plus H2O liquid, and so this is how you represent this. So in other words, what they're saying is if for the molecular equation, if you're doing it this way, you'll need to include water. Well, what the textbook says is that, yes, this is very realistic because the, the proton doesn't 
exist kind of on its own. Absolutely not. It's it's going to be it's it's more you can think about the proton more of as attached to an H T H two O, right? Like a like an acidic solution has a bunch of H three O pluses in it. But it mentions that a a hydrated proton in water, dissolved in water, it's not really attached to one water molecule. It's got a you know a bunch of water molecules around it. It's completely hydrated. And so the book prefers, would suggest that you represent the H plus ion like H plus aqueous, like this. And that makes sense because we know what aqueous means. That means hydrated, right? Dissolved in water, that means hydrated. So we're not, because we put this aqueous, we're not talking about a, a proton alone. It's hydrated. So I, I like this. But it, it's, it says that this is something to keep in mind. This is probably more realistic. But for the remainder of this course, we're not going to use H3O plus like that. If we want to show a, a, a proton dissociated in water or dissolved in water, a proton, you're going to just do H plus aqueous. Okay, now in this chapter, we're talking about acid-base reactions taking place in water. So what kind of reactions are we talking about? Right, this, this isn't a reaction. This isn't a reaction. I mean, you can kind of consider it that way, but it's just more of how you, how this acid, this hydrochloric acid dissolves in water. But, but we're talking about the mixing up, the intermingling of different ions. So when, we're, when we talk about an acid, acid-base acid reactions, what are we talking about? Well, okay, let's take a look at this here. Hydrochloric acid, aqueous, with, mag, with solid magnesium, so, this, so the magnesium isn't aqueous. So this is in water, right? That's the idea. This is in water. Solid magnesium and hydrochloric acid aqueous results in magnesium chloride aqueous in hydrogen gas. Now, this isn't the typical acid base. When, when you say acid base reaction, this isn't what you're thinking of. Th- this is just a reaction that involves an acid. So, so they, they, they mentioned that you have acid base reactions or proton transfer processes, redox reactions or electron transfer processes, right? So is this a proton transfer process? No, no. This is just a reaction that involves an acid. This is actually a, an oxidation reduction reaction. Because if you, if you put the oxidation numbers on each of these atoms before and put them after, you're going to see, for example, the, the hydrogen is plus here, and then the hydrogen or plus one here, and, the, and then the hydrogen is zero here. So the, hot, so the hydrogen atom undergoes oxidation reduction. No proton was transferred here. Electrons were transferred here. Okay, now, but we could still, we could still write out the ionic equation. So put H plus Cl minus dissolved with, MZ, with Mg non-dissolved. And then go on the other side and, and put the, the dissolved ions. See which ones cancel. Get the net ionic equation. We could do all that. Right, because this is this is taking place in aqueous solution. It's it's these interaction of ions, right? The Cl minus ions interacting with the solid magnesium, and then the H plus ions interacting with each other, all in that aqueous solution. So you can do that ionic equation and net ionic equation. Okay, but we're going to do another example. Let's let's look at this reaction. This is called a a neutralization reaction. It's these three reactions that you, that you think of when you think of acid-base reactions. They're proton transfer processes. And also, so this is just an acid dissociating in water. You can also think of a base dissociating in water as well. All right, so what, what happens here? Well, okay, this is more the physical reality. A proton, so and you have an H plus dissolves, and it gets transferred to an H2O. There's no change in oxidation number of the H. The proton just transfers, right? If you had a base, the base dissociates in water, creates OH minus in water, and then an H plus is transferred to the OH. But even in, but in what's the oxidation number of, in, uh, for H2O, what's the oxidation number of, of hydrogen? It's plus one. You're just transferring the proton. So, okay, a neutralization reaction. That's when neutralization reaction is when you mix an acid and a base, when you mix an acid and a base, what happens is you, you wind up with a salt and water. A salt is defined as any ionic compound that 
doesn't have H plus as the cation or OH minus as the anion. Okay, so here's the molecular equation for this neutralization reaction. Again, we, we could have done this same process with, with this. We could have gone through this exact same process that we're about to do with, with this oxidation reduction reaction that involves an acid. Okay, so you imagine you've got some hydrochloric acid, either it's already mixed in a separate solution, like in a chemist's lab, or it's solid or whatever. You've got some sodium hydroxide. You mix them together, but you just you write it as a molecular compound, and what results is this NaCl aqueous and water. It results in water. That's weird. What is it, how, aren't we mixing it in water? What does that mean? Okay, so how would we write the ionic equation? You just these are you just see this is a strong acid this is a strong base so you dissociate them and you just write every single ion right h plus cl minus na plus oh minus and just make sure you put the number the correct number of moles if there's coefficients okay here na plus cl minus and then h2o liquid h2o doesn't dis, doesn't dissolve i mean there's no h2o is just h2o right h2o liquid Okay, so this is what's going on. You've got before, right when you mix the hydrochloric acid and the sodium hydroxide, right when you mix it, you've got H plus ions, Cl minus ions, Na plus ions, and OH minus ions all running around in the solution. Then they start to interact. And, and what happens is you get, at the end of the reaction, you have Na plus ions, Cl minus, this should be minus, Cl minus ions, and just water, all right? So if we cancel the spectator ions, this is what we get. So what this tells you is that when you mix these two, these compounds together, the only kind of chemical reaction taking place is just H plus ions or combining with OH minus ions to create water, all right? Now, what does that mean? You, you've got something before is acidic on one end, and then, and then on the other end, you've got something that's basic. So acidic, it's going to be sour, right? It's going to be an acid. And basic, it's going to be bitter. It's going to have all of those properties of acids and bases. You mix them together, right? You've got this, this H plus ions all over the place. It's acidic. You've got OH minus all over the place. It's basic. Those start combining. So the acidity and the, and the basicity or the basicness starts going away. You just, you just start creating water. So if you have equal molar amounts of these two beforehand, what you get is just pure water in Na plus Cl minus ions. You get just salt water. There's no acid properties left. There's no basic properties left. You just have this like table salt water. You see? But again, there's no, th this is a proton transfer process. There is no, there's no redox going on here. This is a, this is more of what you think of as an acid base reaction, right? A proton transfer process. If it's a proton transfer process, that's, that's what you think about acid-base reactions. Again, this is just a reaction that involves an acid. This is not a proton transfer process. This is a redox reaction. This just involves an acid. Here we're talking about proton transfer processes. The, you have the, the H plus from the hydrochloric acid pairs up with the OH minus and creates H2O you have plus, pl the oxidation number is plus one on the H plus. It combines with the OH minus H2O. The oxidation number of the H is still just plus, plus one. The, the proton was transferred, you see? Okay, now, what if you have a weak acid? How do you write the ionic and net ionic equations? Well, let's start here. Here's the molecular equation for this is a weak acid and a strong base. Okay, just, this is the, the molecular equation. It's important if you're dealing with a weak acid, you really want to write the molecular equation. It's going to help you. So here's the molecular equation, right? This hydrocyanic acid or hydrocyanide acid, sodium hydroxide base, and it results in sodium cyanide aqueous and water. So it's this salt, right? Sodium cyanide, that's an ionic compound. So these are all, this, these solubility rules, these are all ionic compounds because with those precipitation reactions, we're just talking about ionic compounds in this chapter. Compounds containing the alkali metal ions, if it has Na+, it's an ionic compound. It's a soluble ionic compound. Okay, so this is a neutralization reaction where you have, this, you have 
an acid and a base give us salt and water. If you have a weak acid or a weak base, and you, and you go to write the ionic equation, take a look at your molecular equation, and just don't disassociate the weak acid or the weak base. That's what you do. Okay, here's the ionic equation. They just don't associate, dissociate the HCN. They dissociate the strong base. And on here, this is, a, this is a, an ionic compound, so it's a strong electrolyte. They dissociate that and water. And then they cancel the Na plus for the net ionic equation. And that's the net ionic equation. That's for weak acids or weak bases. All right? Okay, redox reactions. Let's take a look at how molecular ionic and net ionic equations work for redox reactions. So, again, we're dealing with electrolytes in some sense with a redox reaction. Ions in solution interact with something, but it's not necessarily like all ionic compounds like it was for precipitation reactions. Because, like, okay, we have in water, we've got solid zinc that doesn't dissolve in water. This copper sulfate, which I believe is an ionic compound. Yes, it should be. But, it, but this dissociates in water into ions, right? The result is zinc sulfate and solid copper. This is the molecular equation, okay? You're just try and understand what are we doing with the molecular equation. You're, you're not considering anything dissolved in water. Even though you put aqueous, which makes this confusing, even though you put aqueous, you're not writing anything as like it's dissolved in water other than the fact that you're labeling it aqueous. You're keeping everything together as molecules, right? You can imagine you're, you're, you're like a chemist in the lab. You've got solid zinc in one hand, copper sulfate in the other hand. You put them together. You're going to put them together in water. You haven't done it yet, but you're going to put them together in water. What results is you're going to have zinc sulfate in the other hand and solid cop copper in the other hand. All right, so what is the ionic equation? Solid zinc, this doesn't dissociate. The copper and the, and the sulfate dissociate. On the other end, you've got dissociated zinc and sulfate and solid copper. That's the physical reality of, like, of everything that's going on. The instant, you, the instant you put the solid zinc in with the dissolved copper sulfate, the, that, that, that moment, you've got solid zinc in, in, in water, undissolved, not aqueous. You've got copper ions running around in solution. You've got sulfate ions running around in solution. That's it. That's, what's ha that's the physical reality. A little while later, you have zinc ions all of a sudden. They weren't in solution before, but now they are. You've got sulfate ions, which were also present before. And now you've got solid copper. Okay? If we cancel out the spectator ions, this is the net ionic equation. Okay? So this is just telling you what's happening, what, 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 what's doing the chemical interaction. Solid zinc reacts with the copper two plus ions in the solution. It doesn't do anything with the sulfate, right? It doesn't, the sulfate doesn't get involved. And what results is zinc ions and solid copper. That's the net ionic equation. You see the difference? You see the difference between these three types of equations? Okay, so that's it for this video. This should give you an intuitive sense of the molecular equation, the ionic equation, and the net ionic equation.